My name is Vincent. My name is Vincent Andrusani. I'm a faculty member in communication and media studies here at Carleton. And I teach the first year introductory courses to the program as well as a fourth year, uh, a fourth year course in media production. Now, being the instructor in of the intro courses, what I thought I'd do is take the next five or so minutes to tell you a bit about them and how they help prepare our students to work through the comms and media studies program more broadly. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll end with a couple quick thoughts about the program and some possibilities for extracurricular student participation. And once that's done, I'd be happy to take any questions that you might have if there are any. Um, if not, then maybe I'll tell you a little bit more about the first year courses in terms of how they're organized and uh, the types of the type of work that students produce um, while they're in them. For the uh, for the remainder of the session, myself and my colleague, Dr. Irina Knezevich, who's the chair of the the, uh, the communication undergrad program, we'd be happy to take any questions you might have through the chat box. OK, so the courses. There are two mandatory courses in the first year of the BCOMS program. The first one runs in the fall and the other runs in the winter semester. The course in the fall is titled uh, Foundations in Communication and Media Studies, and it does precisely that. Um, it begins building the foundations of the discipline. It's organized according to some of the many media that we use today, and it gravitates mainly around the idea of media history. So understanding the origins of our media and how they've been used across different historical moments and across different cultures. Um, so some of the media that we cover in this course are writing and printing, images and photography, radio and audio media, television, digital media, and of course, social media. And so we also spent some time thinking about the relationship between these media and the economy. So a media industries and a mass communication approach informs the work that we do throughout uh, much of the semester. But it's also important to note that this class also offers the opportunity to begin building a language to discuss communication and media. This is something that we need to be able to speak about media. It's something we need not only for the first year, but it's it's a key part of the program and the discipline more broadly. Now, the course that runs in the winter semester is called Current Issues in Communication and Media. And it's at that point that we kind of pivot away from media history and we look at more um, contemporary topics in the discipline. So we begin by learning about the dominant paradigms in communication studies today, and we use these paradigms to think through a series of topics, um, popular culture, uh, film, gaming, online communities, cancel culture, um, environmental communication, and, and smart cities are some of the topics that we offer or that we cover. Um, now this offers students a sense of uh, some of the current issues in the field while it also gets them acquainted with the sort of thinking and uh, critical approaches that the discipline is built on. Okay, so uh, now how does all this help stu uh, set students up for the rest of the program and the program in general? Well, uh, the foundations of the field underpin most any course students will take throughout their degrees. And so the language and the media explorations that we do in first year uh, form the basis of what the rest of the program expands and it develops. But just as important is that some of the many topics that we cover in first year, they end up being primers for dedicated courses throughout the rest of the program. For instance, you know, there's an upper division course called um, visual media, uh, another called environmental communication, another called game studies. And all of these are topics that are introduced in the first year. So as is the case with most disciplines, uh, students in communication have the opportunity to sort of tailor their learning through the later stages of the program by selecting courses that capture their interest more than more than others. So courses at this level, the, which I'm, I'm like uh, the upper division, third and fourth year, they tend to speak more to contemporary topics and they they often inflect uh, the research interests of faculty members themselves. Um, and as a as a quick aside, I've been part of a couple of communication departments here in Canada, and I have to say that the faculty here at Carleton are really are second to none in terms of not only the breadth of their research, but also the quality of it. So uh, a little plug there for my for my colleagues. Um, now, OK, so in terms of in terms of extracurricular activities, 
Uh, aside from all of the student clubs and interest groups and organizations that are available at the university level, I think there was a question about that on the in the um, discussion thread. Um, the, commu the communication department really has a vibrant and active student society. Um, the Communication Undergraduate Student Society, or CUSS, is the acronym, C-O-S-S, um, plays an important role in getting first-year students acquainted with the program and with the university. Um, throughout the school year, they'll organize a series of events, activities, and workshops that are not only designed for leisure and socialization, but also for student learning and professionalization. For instance, last year they invited a couple of communication professionals to speak to students about what it is they do and, uh, and how, how it was that they were trained. So my suggestion for any incoming student would definitely be to get involved with CUS and whether that means becoming a representative or just kind of keeping up to date with what they're up to, um, that would be, and that's an excellent and strategic move, I'd say. Uh, lastly, in terms of work opportunities, I think Andre uh, Dean Plourd covered this quite well, um, but I will say uh, that co-op is available through, throughout our program uh, or through our program. To be honest, I wish I was more um, well versed in how it works than, than I am, but I can tell you that Dr. Knezovich and uh, she's online. And so if you have any questions, um, I'd invite you to ask during the Q&A. Um, but what I can tell you about the co-op program, however, is that in my classes, I've had more than a few students who've participated in it and they have nothing but good things to say about their experiences. Um, our students tend to find placements uh, in a number of different fields, as the employer had mentioned, uh, and across a range of positions as political advisors for government, as communication strategists in the private sector or working for an NGO and in the media industry. So I think that uh, that should probably do it in terms of my overview of the first year courses and the program in general. And so I'd be happy to take any questions if there are any. And um, if not, I can describe maybe the uh, the intro courses in just a bit more detail if uh, if that would be useful. Well, Vincent, there, there was a question about um, whether the course is available for for students who are studying uh, in journalism. Um, so maybe you could touch a little bit on uh, kind of the School of Journalism and Communication. And we, we will touch or talk to uh, Randy from Journalism and Chris from Media Production Design, but maybe you can talk a bit about, um, you know, kind of how communication fits into the school itself and, uh, and whether or not some of the courses are available for students outside of communications and media studies. Mm -hmm. So um, the degree, the degree is, is largely a sort of, uh, it's theoretically oriented. It's theoretically oriented in the sense that our aim in the department is to get students to learn how to think, um, learn how to think and be reflexive and gain what, you know, what we call media literacy. Uh, we have some hands-on sorts of approaches that are at the upper division, but it's largely, um, they're, they're uh, you know, a handful of fourth year courses that kind of get students working with media and, and producing media. But a large part of it is, uh, I think, as uh, Dr. Knezovich mentioned in the uh, in the chat thread, uh, sort of uh, critical and uh, theoretical. Um, in terms of students, uh, students sitting in my class, I know that there are three sections of the intro course, comms uh, 1001 and 1002, the two courses that I teach. Um, and the, the sections that I teach are dedicated to uh, comms majors only. There is, however, a third section, uh, section C, that runs in each semester that's open to journalism, uh, journalism majors as well. So there is some, uh, some play between the, the programs, um, and that would be kind of how, how journalism students end up sitting in the first year, um, the first year comms classes. Awesome, and I got a couple of, uh, not questions, but statements. So one student said that they're coming for comms, comms and media studies and they can't wait. And another student mentioned that he didn't have a question, but he wanted to say how um, excited they are to be coming into communications and media studies and how the courses sound really great. They love hearing about them. So just want to throw some positive feedback uh, your way. And, and to say again, I, I'm a graduate of this degree, so I, I'm a little biased, but I think it's the greatest degree ever created. Um, maybe you can talk a bit about the enthusiasm you see from 
students as they kind of enter into their first year and and the types of, of connections that come out of that um, that that um, that bond that they mm -hmm. get uh, with the degree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Stanley. Uh, well, the first thing I'll say is uh, we're excited to have you. Um, we're really looking forward to having to income uh, welcoming the incoming cohort this year. Um, in terms of the enthusiasm students have, yeah, I mean, I think uh, I saw it in, in last year's cohort quite a bit. Uh, when you cover, as as an instructor, when I cover topics that um, that students connect with because it's part of their everyday life, it, I think the the connections are there to be made. You know, when we talk about social media in class, when we talk about um, you know, cancel culture. When, when you know, I work through a given topic, whatever the topic might be, using um, using examples that resonate in students' lives, using contemporary things, things that happened literally yesterday, uh, that I draw on and bring them into class. You know, the 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 effort that I have to put into making it to connect with students with students' lives, everyday lives, is minimal because it's there and. You know, communication and using media, these are things that we're doing always and already. Um, so thinking about them from a critical perspective and, and trying to develop, as I say, uh, you know, media literacy, it's, it seems like a natural, it seems like a natural step. And I saw it in last year's cohort. Um, students were really, really excited. I would get students talking to me after every lecture about how and why a given topic resonates with them. And so um, I'm ex we're excited to have you.